Yeah, this is a uh, Gil. I believe you just introduced me, and it's uh, kind of fun to be able to join in from uh, around the other other side of the world and do this. So this will be a demonstration of how to control a DMX device inside X lights. And so I'm going to demonstrate a three axis moving head. If you look at the video right over my shoulder, you'll see the, the kind of like clear dome and that's my moving head inside that I've actually got like a weatherproof dome. I've been building for it and I just got one of them completed. So it's inside the bubble. Um, so I'm starting with a completely blank show directory so I can show you everything you would need to do to set one up. And hopefully with the, uh, with the stuff that I show here, you would be able to apply it to other types of DMX devices or different heads because I know some of them have different channel counts and, and the, the channels map differently. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to run this off of uh, through a Falcon board, which if I, So the first thing I'm going to do here is say add E131, and I'm going to type in the address for my Falcon, which is 5.9. I'm going to, just so we're not on the first universe to show that it can be anywhere, I'll pick universe 5. And so I'll just create this one universe. And then in layout, this is the, what the fifth icon over is the DMX model. So I'll click it once and then kind of drag a, a box to create whatever size I want it to be. And I'm gonna I'm gonna change this. There's several different views. They all they all really work the same, but they just show you a different view. Like this is a top-down view. There's also a side view, and it's just trying to give you a representation of what the head you know might look like and this was this is what I call bars. It just shows the channels kind of moving in in bars in and out. Um, and then there were some ones that did a combination of bars plus the other one. But after I got all those working, I came up with this this three d version, which tries to give a three d representation of what the head's really doing. So so now I'm gonna leave it on that one for this demonstration mainly. and so I know, first thing you gotta tell is how many channels does your head have? I, the one I'm using, it can be five or 12. I'm using it right now in the 12 channel configuration. So I'm gonna hit save. First thing I'm gonna do is go down here to the start channel and I'm gonna use a fixed universe five and it can be anything. So I'll say it's gonna start on channel 23 of universe five. So, I'm going to jump over to my Falcon controller and I'm going to go to E131 configuration and then I'm going to make sure that it can receive that universe. So I need to receive universe five. I'll set that and I'm going to go to serial outputs and I'm plugged into port one. So I'll tell it that I'm on universe five start address 23 because that's what I typed in. Now hopefully if that works right, I should be able to actually start up an animation sequence and then pull down a DMX effect. Make that a few seconds. Let me just, since I started with a blank show directory, I don't have things organized the way I like it yet. So let me just drag these around to the bottom. Okay, so so even though I haven't really done anything to the model yet, I could um, I could come over here and let's see if I move channel one. See if it's doing anything. So that's not doing anything yet, is it? So let me go back to back to the head. I'm going to tell it the pan. I know this one's pan channel one. Let's so get output to lights. Oh, maybe that's what's. I always forget something because I think it should. Yep. So I can see it behind me moving there. So even though I I, I might not have even had the printout 
for this for this head I can figure out that that's a pan channel just because I came into this drop this effect and moved to channel one so you'll notice up here on the screen that you don't see this representation moving yet because it doesn't know which channels are what yet so I've got to teach it so I come in here and I tell it pan channel is channel one and then if I come back over here now you'll see up on my screen that that my you know little GUI representation actually spins around trying to show you know what's happening so the whole purpose of what you're seeing on the screen is to try to give you a representation of what might be happening in the real world uh, let's see so I won't, I won't do the experiment for all of them since I already know what most of them are. So my tilt channels, channel three. Um, if I was over here, I can also add a layer on top. I do have it set up so that you, you can use on effects or color wash effects on top of a DMX model. And it's smart enough to try to figure out how to, to paint the colors without you having to, and if you were on this effect, you could you could come down and and figure out like what's channel to do. So I don't know if you can see, it's kind of glowing red as I move that slider, because I happen to know it's on channel seven for the red channel. But when I, when I put this color wash effect, nothing's happening yet. And that's because I haven't taught the model which channels are, are on the color, so I need to come over here and I'll tell it that red's channel seven, green's channel eight, and blue's channel nine. Now when I come back and click that color wash, now it's actually running that effect and you, you'll see the head sweeping through those colors. Let me try to pan it where it's uh, maybe a little more visible. I don't want to blind us though. So you can see it's actually sweeping through the colors of this color wash right now. You'll also see on the screen how it's transitioning through those colors. Um, other thing on this DMX effect. So notice it just says channel one, two, three, four. So you, you know you can't really tell what they are. You can go back here on this model now and under strand names. You can go in under the node names, and now I can type in that, that this is the pan channel, this is the tilt channel, and then you can name your channels. I'll just put these in. I happen to know channel two is like pan fine, four is tilt fine. I don't remember what all my other channels are yet. But now I'll click back on this effect, and now you'll see the names have updated. So now it says pan, it says tilt. If I scroll down, you'll see it say red, green, and blue. So that so now whenever you use the, the DMX effect on that model, it'll now update and show which names map to which channel. You can also use the value curve. So if I want to make this dynamically pan, I could tell it to do like an up-down ramp and it'll start spinning around. I could add in, do the same thing where I make the tilt. So you can see on the screen, it's trying to represent what's happening back there. Oh, the other thing I haven't shown yet, let me take these ramps off. So if if I just take this, this slider and slam it from zero, 255 you can see on screen it's it's just immediately snaps to wherever I move it but behind me you can see the head takes a, a little while to get there so what I implemented to, to account for that was this pan slew limit and then tilt slew limit so you can kind of give a um, a limit for how long it takes and I just do some experiments like I typed in the number I manually moved it and I looked to see whether the on screen the on-screen representation was getting there before the real model, and then I kind of tweaked it, and I, I found that for this moving head, it's about 185 degrees per second. And so now if I slam that over, you should see that on-screen stops right about the time that the real one stops. 
And the only thing that um, I think is not quite represented yet is I, I did find if you reverse directions, like if I move over and snap it back, there is a little bit of lag. So I haven't quite figured out what to do about that. And I mean, I guess I might have to add another parameter or, or, or I mean, I might need to do something to account for um, like a reverse in directions because it seems like it just can't immediately reverse direction the way I'm doing it in the on screen. Let's see, also there's another parameter to try to help you be able to make what's on screen match what's in your yard. There's these orientations. So pan orientation right now is, is defaulted to zero. So what you might want to do is, is set your value to zero and then look at, you know, where's my head pointed. So if I pretended that this head should be pointing straight at me to be like pointing towards the front of my yard, then right now it looks like it looks like it's 180 degrees out because it's pointing to the right, but my real head's pointing to the left. So then I would go back here and I would tell it that the orientation is 180 degrees. And that would flip it. And then when I come back over here, now it's matching up so that when I make the on screen one look like it's pointing straight at me, you can see that behind me it's also pointing at me. So now I've I've changed the orientation so that it matches what the real head does. I also have the model defaulting to 540 degrees for the pan pan's total range of motion. That that was just done by I I took the took the slider and went all the way at 255 and I looked at how many rotations and it looked like it was one and a half. So I put in 540. So if I went back here and told it that that was only 180, what you see is a mismatch because the on-screen one would only be going like half, maybe a little bit less than half. Like right now on screen, it's pointing directly at me, but you can see the real head behind me is not because they're, it's not matched up with the real number of degrees it can do in one rotation. So I'll reset that back to 540. Let's see, there's also a tilt orientation. It's all it's already correct because it's pointing it's pointing level. But if it wasn't, then you could you could make an adjustment there. So let's see, I've done all the colors. There's also a um some some heads have a shutter channel or a dimmer dimmer channel that has to be above a certain value before it'll actually show you any light. So the way I modeled that was you could come in here and say, let's see, let me see if I, what my what does channel six do? So my channel six looks like it puts it into some different strobe modes. But I'll pretend that that channel was my shutter channel and say channel six. And the threshold says, what value does it need to be for that channel before it will let it show light? So I remember this one. I think I had trouble with this one. Uh, Keith, do you remember what I was doing wrong on this? Because I had the same problem. No, I was presenting not at the working. same time. <laughs> yeah, I had the same problem in Vegas where this didn't work for a minute, and then all of a sudden I did something and it started working. Because that, that really should cut that beam off right now. Like at least on the screen, not the real one, because the real one's going to react to whatever that channel really does. Um, maybe it'll come to me, but so this threshold here, normally, like if I said to say 254, then that would that would mean that the beam should cut off until I get to that value. Yeah, that's baffling me. I had the same problem before. I should practice that one. I practiced everything but the, that shutter. Oh, well, I'll skip that. So let's see what else. What else can I show for the DMX head? I actually went through that, all those features kind of quick. 
like I said, you can also use an on effect, so it's it's smart enough to figure out that that effect is on a DMX model, and then then it it goes and inspects these these channel values and says, oh, if he's he's putting out red, then I'm going to put that out on channel seven, so it puts it out on the on the proper channel. The one thing we don't have working properly right now is this is if you tried to group a whole bunch of these into a model group and then apply an effect. We don't seem to be distributing the effect down properly inside a group and I need to look into why that's happening. Let's see. There's not too many other options on One here. second, Gil. Yeah. So the question is, is if the DMX light was mounted inverted, so hanging off something, how would you do that? I think I need to mod the program to allow that because right now I assumed everything was sitting upright. So I would probably need to add the ability to let someone, you know, rotate, you know, rotate this on the screen like, like that and then have it actually rotate with it. Because basically you're just trying to make this, you know, that would be just trying to make the screen match up to reality. So the way it is right now, someone would have to just know that when it goes right, it's really going to go left if I mount it upside down. But yeah, that's uh, something I didn't think about when I created the model. So, you know, as we run into what people's needs are, you know, we look at, we look at things like that and go back and add more features. All right, another question um, about the covers that you've built. How have you built those? I've actually got mobile mics. So I've got these latches. It's basically the base is built out of just two by fours. And then I got the, I got the design from Sean Patel. Let me see, where's this snack going? So you can buy these, you can buy these like, uh, acrylic domes i believe it was only like twelve dollars for one of these acrylic domes but the the hole was only about six inches so i had to use a dremel tool to to uh, cut it out wider so i believe i i got this this metal piece here is called a register i guess for like an hvac and so i put the register on top of the plastic and drew the circle where i needed to cut and it took me a little bit of shaving to to get that hole right, and then I just used um, so what are the, some kind of silicone to, to glue this. What are the domes designed for? This is just to try to weatherproof it, so I could actually put it out no, in the no, rain. I, I mean, uh, what are they designed for? Are they designed for lights? Or? Oh, that. Yeah, I believe that was like some kind of cover for a light. So. Um, I think it was yeah Sean Patel on the X Lights uh, Facebook group that that gave a link for these, and and you know I basically tried to copy his design. I actually didn't do it right the first time and had to had to go go through a redesign of the base because it wasn't working right. But yeah, it's just kind of getting the there's a there's a base up under here to try to space it up high enough so that it gets the head above the lip of the register and, and into the dome. And then I had to buy a 90 degree DMX cable so that it wouldn't hit in the back. And even my, I kind of need to get a 90 degree power cable there too, because my power cable's sticking in the back a little bit and I have to, that's why I was having trouble getting the top off. But yeah, other than that, I just, you know, I've got a hole in top of this piece of wood here so that the fan can kind of vent straight down. And I plan to put something, I didn't want this wood sitting straight on the ground. I was going to do like Sean did. He put like these four bolts around the bottom. And, and with those four bolts, you know, it just kind of spaces the wood up off the ground a little bit. I could make this uh, skull move for a minute. I won't go through how to do it, but I could open a sequence just to show it moving. Yeah, go on. I know you said you guys don't do Halloween, but you know you could dress it up like a, a Santa Claus head or something. You know? <laughs> Let's see. I need to switch it over to 
So I'll switch over to this guy. Hopefully it'll, uh, there's a, there's a power channel on here that doesn't always activate immediately. So I need to see if, see if that guy. So what I've got here is when you buy this skull trying skull that you see back there, it comes with some sequences that are pre-made and I created a way to actually import the VSA sequences into X lights. And so I've already done that right here. Did I hit render? I can't remember. Oh, now I hit output the lights again. Okay, now it's on. Yeah, so you can see the see it behind me. So I won't play the whole song, but you get the idea. And all those motions, you could actually articulate them inside of X lights. The thing I'll mention about that is there's this other effect called a, a servo effect that I created to be able to do this. And the, the main reason I had to create this effect was because these, these servos are 16 bit and X lights was designed to run like eight bit lights. So, I created this servo effect with this 16-bit checkbox, and if you do that, then you're basically telling it to to offset the, um, or you're basically telling it to use two channels. So it takes whatever value that you pump into it, and it spits it out on on two contiguous channels. So theoretically, you you know you could use this to drive any servo that you want that was either eight or 16-bit. So it's not limited to just driving this particular skull. Do you, do you want to introduce people to Skulltronics and where you got it from? Yeah, so this is um, this is from, a, there's a website called Skulltronics.com. Um, you can see the spelling of it right here on the screen. It's actually one of the, one of the options when you do the drop down of Skulltronics skull. And Jerry Jewell, he's on our, he's on our Facebook Excites group. He's the, I believe he's out in California and he manufactures these. So I got a little bit of a break on mine because he knew I was going to be, you know, making, making the, the sequences work inside X lights, you know, so I got, I got mine on for a good deal. I don't even know if I'm going to use it yet, but it's been fun to play with. It's just like my DMX head. I haven't actually implemented my moving head in my show yet. I actually bought it mainly just to work on, making it work in X lights and then, now I need to actually design it into my show. I just don't know where I'm going to put it yet. So I could field some questions if there's any other questions about any of the stuff I've shown. So Gil, the question is going back to your DMX lights, I guess you kind of showed the value curves, but you kind of skipped over how you'd actually sequence it in a show. Uh, let's see. Let me jump back to, that show directory and do a dummy sequence. Oh, I didn't just save my layout. I won't redo it, but so let's see. So if you if you did a motion, so let's say I. I could tell this to like move to a certain amount and then drop another effect down. Uh, the other thing to make note of is right now in X lights, that gap between the effects is actually going to pump a zero out to your device. So let me go here and I'll move that to there. So I'll actually kind of hit play here and you'll see what happens. So I move that. And you see it jump back to zero and then do the second command. So that gap in between actually pumps out a zero, which I don't really like because that means that means you'd have to put in like filler effects. So you pretty much have to bring all your effects together if you don't want it to jump back to zero in between. 
I'm thinking about trying to do a mod so that we can have an option on the models to be able to hold their position in between effects. And it would mainly be something that you would do for the DMX or the servo effects. But it's, it's basically like doing your other effects. You just chain, chain them together to do different things. And I actually haven't done a whole lot of sequencing with, um, with one. So these two effects are just static values. Then you could, you could go down to where you had a longer effect and then you told it to do a ramp and you can come in and set, set the values of your ramp. So when you played it, it's going to do that first command. Does a second command and then it executes that ramp. And then on top of all this, you could have a layer where you're where you're telling it what, what to do with the colors. So while it's doing all that, you could have it cycling through whatever colors you wanted. So you should see the color match up with what you see in the color wash effect there. So yeah, it would take it would take you know a while to try to coordinate multiple heads to do something interesting. I'm curious if uh, I need to ask Tom Bet George. I think he did that. I think he's using the X lights. I think he told me he used it for that um, Harry Potter, you know, show he did, and he's got those you know those moving heads on top of his roof. What if someone had, uh, I don't know, a, a smoke machine with LEDs or whatever? How would you represent that? Well, we we don't have a pretty picture for it, but you could you could still use the DMX model. Like what I would do is click on, you know, drop another model on the screen, and you could just use the bars version. And let me just name that. Let's just say it was a fogger. And then I need to add that. So you would you would come in and use use the DMX effect, and then whatever channels you figure out activate the fogger. You know you would use that channel. And what I make happen here? So I don't know if you can see that. You see the up here on the bars, the bars representation. You can see it's showing you the value of that channel. So you could just use that just to represent what's happening on the channel. But in real life, that that should make it do something. I actually did. I ran a fogger at Vegas two years ago. Somebody brought one, and it took us a minute to figure out which channel did what. I basically came in here. You know, the most important thing is to get your start channel to match up with whatever hardware you're using to control it. And then you can come in and just start playing with your channels. And, you know, you're probably going to find one of the channels that all of a sudden makes some smoke shoot up out of it. You know, if you, but, you know, you should have the printout that came with the device. So you should know which channel does what on, on it. So I'm looking at one of those, Gil. Someone's got a fogger sheet here and it's got it's only got four channels so the first one smoke which is zero to 255 which seems pretty straightforward it's just zero to 100 percent yeah so i would come in and tell it that's four channels and then you know you're not going to have anything that necessarily right. does anything on screen for the smoke channel but you could but it's about to name it it's about to get right hard. here right so number two is not used at all number three is the lead colors but it's really weird because it says if it's zero it's off if it's one to ten it does auto color change if it's 11 to 20 it's red no blue sorry uh, if it's 21 to 30 it's red if it's 31 to 40 it's green <laughs> and then it goes into strobes and everything right. so that one channel does every color so yeah, we don't really have a a way to do that yet for for things that do those special mappings. It's you know you don't we'd almost have to set up a profile and somehow be able to know for each device that this range does this and then try to represent it. So I assume you would so, just so manually you can, a slider for that channel and you just set it accordingly. 
Yeah, like like you can move that color channel and set it to the value. You're not going to see anything on the screen that that tells you what's happening. You know, so you would just have to know. So you won't be able to use what, color wash. What values do wash. what? So you yeah, the the color you wouldn't be able to use color washer on for that type of device. That that only works for devices that have three channels for the colors, basically because I don't know, you know, what values to write to create those colors. Yeah, that's in that what particular I device. So we would have to think about a good way to do that if we really wanted to try to support. You know, we'd almost be getting into like that that EJ type software. You know, where we're having full DMX profiles for all the devices. So that'll be in version 16. <laughs> I keep saying like, you know, when the hardware shows up on my doorstep, I make it work in next lights. <laughs> yeah, likewise. Okay. Well, that was, that was about a half hour. What you wanted me to... Yeah, I think we're good. That was really great, Gil. Thank you very much. Let me stop the share. All right.